Hello and welcome. It's Bill Sklodowski. Welcome aboard for another exciting edition of iPhone Friday uh, with lessons on how to do, well, the basics with your iPhone or your iPad. Sometimes it's a little more involved than basic stuff, but we always try and uh, make it easy for everybody. So uh, this week we're continuing with our iPhone A to Z series, and that means we're up to the letter C, and today I've chosen C for calendar. Uh, now you might be wondering, gee, Bill, why not contacts? Those are also very important, and you're right, contacts, super important, but it just so happens I did a whole iPhone video on contacts not too long ago. Uh, in fact, all the information in it is still completely valid and up to date, and I will link that beneath this video so that you can find the contacts video, because actually contacts are going to play a little bit of a, a role in today's lesson on calendar. Okay, I hope that all made sense, and I'm, I'm sure it will. So anyway, thank you for being here. If there's a, a friend or colleague you think would find this helpful and useful, please feel free to share it. And as always, if you have questions or comments, uh, you can leave those directly uh, wherever you are watching this video, Facebook, YouTube, or on the blog, BillSkladowski.com. All right, let's uh, dig in to, uh, for today, shall we? We're going to talk about calendars. Now, before I get started, I want to mention the calendar that I'm going to be showing you is the iPhone calendar, which is where, where it says Friday the 21st there, the, today's date, obviously. That's the built-in iPhone calendar. Now, calendars... Calendar apps, I should say, are one of the most popular out there when it comes to the iPhone ecosystem. Fancy word, right? Ecosystem. But there's just dozens and dozens of really good ones out there. And in fact, if you look down at the bottom of my screen there, that yellow with the bl uh, uh, blue and green dots on it is another one that I'm testing right now as well. But I want to stick to the iPhone baked in ones. So iPhone calendar there on Friday the 21st, so we'll dig into that, okay? So um, remember, as always, if you don't have your calendar on your home page or you can't find the button for it, you can always just tell Siri, open calendar, and he'll do it for you. Awesome, right? So uh, with that in mind, let's dig into calendar here. So usually when you come into the calendar, it's going to show you this view, which is kind of, well, it's a long scrolling, what they call the task view of the calendar, okay? Which basically means like today's date at the top, there's Friday the 21st, all right? And I've got a, I've got a reminder of some sort. We'll talk about reminders and calendar events in a moment. But I can just scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll, and it just keeps going date by date by date by date. Wednesday the 23rd, October the 3rd, October the 10th. Now, in this particular view, right, if I don't have anything on the date, in fact, you can see right there, Saturday, November 14th, and it jumps right to the 21st. What's up with that? I don't have anything scheduled for those days. So it doesn't show a day where there's nothing scheduled, okay? So that's tip number one with calendars. And by the way, speaking of which, I know a lot of you probably use the calendar app. If you don't, you should. It's super helpful to keep yourself organized. But um, we're going to do some of the basics, and then I'm going to try and find a couple of things that maybe you haven't seen with the calendar, some cool tips and tricks that might, you know, bump it up to the next level for you. So hang in there. If this is all like looking like the basics to you, We'll see if we can find some more interesting stuff for you as we go. But anyway, uh, you don't see items when there are none scheduled for that date. And if you ever need to get back to today's date, see right down there at the very bottom, bottom left corner where it says today. If I tap on today, it jumps right back to today's date and it always puts today right at the very top. Okay. Now, the look up at the very at the very top there. Of course, you have the August button with the point to the back, right? And then that will take you to the entire month of August, right? And on this view, you can see the entire month. And some days, well, on, oh, no, the 25th and the 26th, no spots. On the days where there's a little itty-bitty dot, that means you have something scheduled on that day. On the other hand, if you were to jump to, say, the 25th, and all I have to do is tap on the 25th, well, there's, it even says down below, no events, right? But for today, I jump to it. It's got that reminder. If I jump to tomorrow, 
All right, I'm going to a little drive-in show uh, tomorrow in our town here, so things going on. All right, and you can always, the Today button, always down in the bottom to jump to today. Now, if you need a bigger view, you want to jump ahead several months or even several years, keep hitting that back pointing arrow up in the upper left where it says August 2020. If I tap on that again, it takes me to the whole year, and then I can just scroll year by year if I choose to. And if I want to look at, say, what's going to happen in, oh, I don't know, May of 2021, I can tap on May of 2021, and it takes me to that month's calendar, okay? So I must have a recurring event there, whatever that review is. I must have a recurring that just happens constantly because I'm not making plans for May of 2021 yet. But again, you can always tap on today down at the bottom, and it will always take you to today, right? Now, next over, going across the top there, uh, after the uh, date, the August 2020, there's this, it's a solid red with kind of underlines and stuff. That's kind of showing you the different views that you have in your calendar, right? So now we're on this month and uh, day kind of one that shows you what's happening on a specific day. But if I tap on that, all right, it'll take me to the full month, all right, or I can tap on today and it will take me back to the full scrolling month as well. Now, by the way, if you have it turned on so that your phone rotates, you know that the screen rotates when you turn it side to side. If I turn this phone side to side, it changes the view so that now I have the days of the week across the top and I can scroll up and down to see the different things that are happening at different times. I don't really, I don't use that a whole heck of a lot, but it's there if you want it, okay? And then let's just finish up our top thing up there. If I uh, want to search for a particular event, the little magnifying glass, I can search for an event by the name of the person or the contact or the, you know, going to a game or watching a movie or all those things that we're not doing anymore. I can search for them up there. And last but not least, the plus sign, which you probably know, you tap on the plus sign and now I can add a new event, right? So let's just talk about this for just a couple of minutes because this will probably be review for most of you. But with the event, you get to put in as much or as little information as you want, but obviously the more, the better. So let's say I had a dentist appointment coming up next week or something like that. So under title, I can just type it in, right? Dentist appointment, uh-huh. And then I can also choose the location for it. And this is why contacts are so important, okay? So if all I do is tap right on where it says location, it's gonna bring up a list of places that I've been most recently, right? So there's recents up at the top. Right? And I can scroll down this, and then when I go through all the recents, right, I also get to my contacts down there as well. So I can find anybody in my contacts just by typing on them up at the top. And even though it says location, so for example, I was playing with this before. So my dentist is Florida Integrative Dentistry. Okay, So I could just tap on that, but I wanted to show you one other thing real quick. So if I know that my doctor's name, if I know my doctor's name, and I do, right, but I don't remember the name of his office, Florida Integrative Dentistry, if I tap in location and I start typing, C-H-A-P, because I know his name is Dr. Chapman, C-H-A-P-M-A-N, all right, it comes right up as Florida Integrative Dentistry, all right? And then all I have to do is tap on it, boink, like that. I just literally tapped on it one time and it puts that right in the location, all right? So just to finish how to create this, by the way, if it's an all-day event, it's an all-day event. Thank God my dentist appointment is not an all-day event. <laughs> but it's gonna start, let's say, next week on Tuesday at 1 p.m., all right? So that's fine. And by default, the calendar automatically makes each new appointment one hour, all right? Now, if you want to make it, see, because down at the very bottom, it says ends at 2 o'clock. But if I wanted to make that a different time, I think it might be two hours. I can tap on that, and then I can make it 3 o'clock, all right? So then, when all is said and done, make sure, don't forget, make sure you hit on the Add button up in the upper right corner there. Add, all right? And it's going to put it in there. So now let's go find it. So there's our dentist appointment. See, I can scroll down to 
the 25th. We made it for Tuesday. And here's why the contact piece of it is so important. When I tap on that, all right, you can see, look at the very top where it uh, has the dentist's address in red, right? If he's in my contacts, if anybody is in my contacts, and I use that method that I just showed you, where I search for a contact as the location of the appointment, it will automatically insert it, and when time comes to get there, right, I pull up my calendar, oh, got to go to the dentist, gee, I forget how to get to his appointment, uh, how to get to his office or whatever. Well, there it is, and all I have to do is, look, is tap on it, and it opens up the maps, and it shows me how long it's going to take me to get there, and I can tap on directions, and it will give me turn-by-turn -turn directions on how to get there. Whew, don't have to remember how to get anywhere anymore. Okay, so that makes my life a lot, lot easier, okay? Let's go back to our calendar here. In fact, now that that's in there, what can I do with it? Well, I can anything. If I want to change anything, there's the edit button up in the upper right. So when I tap on that, I can change the date and the time and the, I, can, I can change everything, right? And if I don't want to go or if I cancel it or need to reschedule it, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, delete event, and then it's going to say, do you want to delete it? Yes, I do, because I don't want to go to the dentist next week if I don't have to. So there we go and it's all gone, okay? So that's a quick kind of overview of some calendar stuff. Now remember, like we said, if you uh, have the contact, if you have people in your contacts and you make an appointment with somebody who's in your contact, I don't, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm meeting Joe for lunch. I'm meeting Cindy for coffee. I'm going to the dentist. I'm going to get my car's oil changed, whatever. If I have all of those uh, people or places or businesses in my contacts, it's going to make my life a lot easier when it comes to finding them and getting to them. Of course, not everything needs an address, and you don't have to put an address into the uh, uh, calendar event uh, you know, listing. But if you're going somewhere you don't know or haven't been to in a long time, super helpful to try to get you better directions to getting there. Okay. There's a lot more to do with this, and rather than get into it, I think we'll just leave it there for now. If you've got questions about calendars, if there's something that you've been, you know, you've been using them, but maybe you've had a question about how do I do a specific thing. I think I'd like to hear, you know, some feedback on that. If, uh, you know, you have something that you need help with or a question, or I've tried to do this, how do I make that work? All right. All of that might be something for a better time. I will say one last thing. Let, let me jump, let me jump back over to the, to the phone for a second. And of course that is this simple fact that if you want to, you don't have to do any of that typing at all. You can just have Siri do it. You know, you can just lunch with Bob Monday. I didn't find any appointments oh. with Bob at that lunch for Monday. Of course you didn't. Make an appointment for lunch with Bob on Monday. What time is your appointment? 12 noon. Which Bob? <laughs> I've got a lot of Bobs in my contacts. Oh, let's turn that off. I've got a lot of Bobs in my contacts, right? But I would just tap on the one I want, okay? And it's going to automatically create that calendar event that we talked about in our calendar, okay? So you can have Siri do a ton of things. And when we get around to Siri stuff, that might have to be a whole nother series. I'm not sure, but it might have to be a whole nother series of how to do things with Siri because there's just so much that you can do. All right, that's going to do it for this week. I know it was, there's a lot there. Right? Calendar is one of the most powerful probably one of the most useful things on your phone just to help keep you organized, okay? So if you'd like to learn more about how all this works or to ask questions or to see past videos, let me invite you over to the blog at billskoladowski.com, all right? And uh, if you'd like to stop by, what you will see as soon as you arrive on the homepage is this picture here with the kids watching the video. Click on that uh, click me button right in the middle and you can sign yourself up to get our newsletter. Every weekend, I send out a, a newsletter of the past week's videos. So, you know, here's what we did on Wednesday. Here's what we did on Friday. And also the handout. There'll be a handout for today's video on how to work with the calendar. And you'll get all that stuff for free. So just stop by and uh, sign yourself up for the newsletter. There you go. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Kind of a busy week there. So I hope you're staying safe out there. Have a great weekend. And we will see you again next Wednesday for What's New Wednesday.